short, let's say, overview, I wanted to invite Juliana uh, to get one more input for you on what it means in practice, uh, yeah, to tackle the operation emissions. Hi, hi, Alice. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the invitation to be here today with you guys and share a little bit about Avina's experience. I'm going to share a small PowerPoint just to, to, for you to have a, a, an idea of what we are working right now. I'm just not sure if you are, I, yes. Well, I, I don't know if everyone here knows uh, Avina, Fundacion Avina. We are a Latin American foundation uh, rooted in Global South. And we work uh, mainly at 19 Latin American countries, but we also have some work going on in Africa and some other countries, but our main focus in, is in Latin America. But we are quite small foundation. We have only 75 staff members right now. Uh, we have external consultants who help us according to some uh, 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 projects that are, are going on on the ground with our local partners, but our staff is pretty small for this, uh, uh, all these 19 uh, countries where we work. And this is because we mainly work through our local partners uh, from each country where we are, so they are the ones who really implement our strategy. And we have this focus uh, to work in favor of human dignity and the care for the planet. And for that, we work mainly through three uh, great areas, which are climate action, democratic innovation, and just and regenerative economy. And we have 10 programs that somehow uh, relate to those three areas. So just to moving on, uh, why did we decide to foster a strategy for carbon neutrality in our in Fundacion Avina? Why was that? Well, Avina works within the climate agenda since 2004. Maybe we didn't call it like that in, in that time, but we worked in the Amazon since this year and uh, by helping uh, and, and contributing uh, together with our uh, local partners in the conservation and recovery of the forests. We are also working with circular economy, uh, the transformation of the energy metrics in some of the countries, as well as urban and rural resilience and strengthening climate governance in the region and go globally. Our 10 programs are related to that. So it was natural for us that for coherence, we should foster uh, and understand our impact uh, toward emissions and then uh, act upon it. And we also observe this uh, urgent context that we are right now of climate emergency and we need uh, concrete actions to face this global situation. That's why in 2019, we decided to develop an institutional strategy to build the internal enabling conditions to reach this carbon neutrality in 2025. Uh, we know it's not from the day, the night to the next day that we are going to be carbon neutral. It's not easy. Uh, it, it demands resources, time, and political will to do it. And uh, but we understand that we need to to take each step each step towards uh, this goal. Now, so the idea is really first to measure our CO two emissions, to know ourselves what what kind of impact do we create through our operations. Then the first priority is to reduce these emissions. And after all, what's not possible to reduce, then yes, we, we try to compensate. So in 2019, uh, uh, Avina published a, a climate emergency declaration. 
where we commit to reduce our emissions and promote urgent actions. Uh, this uh, commitment uh, had three main uh, focus. The first one was to commit to pri prioritize reducing and then compensating our emissions. We always uh, we also wanted to guide our 10 programs to transversally seek transformational impacts in climate change. Uh, Avina don't work only with environmental issues. We work also with a lot of social issues, but we see opportunity of working with climate in, for example, recycling issues, in sustainable cities issues, of course, in migration issues. So we want to have the climate change transversally uh, considered in each uh, program strategy. And we also want to raise our voice is, uh, towards what's happening and to motivate our other organizations and companies to do the same, like we are doing right now in this opportunity, because uh, it's important that everyone makes what is possible and within your reach to uh, uh, really uh, have some uh, action towards uh, this uh, urgent issue. The first thing is it, that is to do it is that it requires political will from the senior management of our foundation. So our CEO, our CFO, our COO, uh, all of them uh, were really worried and wanting to do it. And this was really important to have this declaration published and also to have inside Avina Foundation, uh, our uh, start activities that really led us to begin changes in our operations. And another very important thing is the awareness and commitment of all employees. Uh, uh, all the staff needs to be part of this task. Uh, it's not only the climate action program that is part of this task. We really need to engage everyone on that. So I, here I present you a little bit of the timeline uh, of Avina, Avina's work in this issue. Well, since 2012, we uh, try to compensate CO2 emissions at our institutional meetings. But we knew already then that it's too, too less for everything that every, every mission that we really create through our um, uh, work. So in 2019, we uh, published this declaration of uh, climate emergency and we formed an ad hoc group uh, for, uh, which is called Avina Carbon Neutral. This ad hoc group is formed by people from different programs so that uh, everyone gets engaged and contributes to this process. And also another very important step we took at that year was the adaptation of some of our systems for the collection of emissions data. For example, uh, travel emissions, as Alice said, uh, traveling is the is the more uh, is where we uh, have most of the our emissions so we need to to adapt our travel registry system so that we could calculate uh, our emissions through our flights in 2020 we made our first first calculation regarding 2019 it was very interesting uh, we are still, as we are, uh, we were still beginning. It's it was everything done at Excel sheets in a very simple way, but at, at the same time a very effective way. And then we started to design the Arvina Carbon Neutral Strategy now yeah, with with more this climate action plan that that Alice told about. Uh, we call it Arvina Carbon Neutral Strategy. And at the same time, we, we uh, started to define the main activities we would need to put in place. One of them was the design of the sustainable and low carbon uh, purchasing policy uh, so that all our purchases could really be 
very uh, conscient and, and effective and uh, the best possible regarding uh, reducing emissions. We started building this emission management system that by now, still by now is an Excel sheet, a complex Excel sheet, but it's in Excel. And we started compensating the emissions from the pre previous year. And this is very important because once you have uh, your footprint calculated, uh, you have many forms of compensating it. And there are different kinds of uh, companies or even NGOs that make this uh, compensation that uh, facilitate this process to, to any organization of, of com or a company that is interested. But uh, carbon by itself is like a commodity. So uh, there is a cheap carbon that is when uh, they choose the most cost effective way to sequestrate carbon. This is not the choice we made. We wanted uh, uh, to compensate it through a, a, a more, uh, a carbon with more quality, let's say, uh, with, with additional benefits. And we decided to compensate it through, with the plantation of native species in the Amazon in that case with socioeconomic impacts for local community, communities in the Amazon. This is a decision. This made it cost a little bit more. It's not so much more, but uh, we believe it's more coherent to what Avina works and, and, and wishes that, that the world goes through. So this is a very important issue. In 2021, we keep on with this issue with these calculations. And here, 2020 and 21, we were, there was pandemic years. And we were a little bit slower also in the traveling, but we keep on, kept on uh, calculating emissions. By now, in 2022, 23, 24, the these three years, uh, we want to strengthen these measures to reduce emissions uh, mainly. Uh, we are learning from what we've done until up to now. And we want to strength, strengthen it a little bit, having more uh, concrete goals, for example, regarding traveling. And, but we are still working on that. And uh, we are now wanting, uh, going to start the design and implementation of this strategy for scope three. Né, to compensate emissions from Avina's portfolio, our value chain. Uh, this is the most challenging one, and I will say a little bit about it afterwards. Our goal is to up to 2025 that we really uh, are carbon neutral and maybe get this ISO uh, certification. We want uh, it to be recognized and, and also uh, to motivate others to do the same. Well, uh, uh, regarding measuring emissions, uh, here I have a, a, a print of a system that we have that I will show to you as well in the system here. We have put all those information from the Excel sheet at the Power BI so that all the organization, all employees could see how our emissions are, in which uh, program uh, is our emissions per person, how much do we emit? So it's, it's some simple way to, to organize the information and the goal here is to engage everyone. So we can see, for example, in 2009, our emissions, uh, how many trees were planted, how many um, uh, tons of CO we have avoided through our practices. And then we see that in, in 2020, for example, it has reduced a lot because of the pandemics, the same with 21. But uh, so the people can play here a lot and, and take a look. Uh, I would like to show, for example, we have uh, in information per countries. And this is very interesting because of course, uh, some countries 
have more employees, but also have a different energy metrics, uh, which has also an, an impact at our emissions. Now, so if we here see here at this uh, blue graphic, we see that Argentina, for example, have uh, uh, more um, emissions, but in the same time, they, we have more employees in Argentina. When we say in this green bar here below that uh, Chile, for example, and Belgium, we had a person in Belgium, they also have, have very high emissions per person. Here we, we can see per person and then the energy metrics have uh, has a, a, an impact on that. And for example, we also want to calculate the avoided emissions. Why? Because the decisions we make in the foundation also can contribute to reduce emissions. Avina uh, uh, has a home office uh, policy for 10 years already right now, but with the pandemics, then we closed a lot of offices. So all the emissions from buildings were pretty well reduced. We still calculate the emissions from our homes but uh, the level of emissions is, is much lower. And then we can see, for example, uh, the contribution also that if somebody goes by bike or go, goes by walking uh, uh, on, on avoided um, uh, emissions. And then this Power BI tool also have, has an information per employee which is very good for engaging the employees. So I know, for example, my, my emissions from flights, from lodging, from energy, how much do I contribute to avoid the emissions by working at home, in which programs do I work? So it's just a, a playful way to uh, engage uh, employees. So here are some of the purchasing uh, policies that we have adjusted into more sustainable and low carbon issues regarding flights, lodging, uh, transportation, uh, electricity events. So it's uh, some kind of guidance that we also try to follow in Avina. Which are the challenges we have right now? And I think this might interest, interest you because uh, we have uh, maybe similar challenges here. Emissions scope one and two, uh, the emissions scope one are the direct emissions, for example, for, from buildings. This one we have reduced a lot by, by home office. But uh, regarding indirect emissions, uh, and uh, we are a small organization working in 19 countries. So we, we really travel a lot. We are trying to make better decisions on, on when, when to travel and when not to travel. But anyway, uh, there are some limits at, at the reduction potential without weakening the relationship that we have with, with local partners. So now we are starting, starting to study our ways, other ways of uh, um, uh, thinking about uh, uh, how to uh, reduce emissions from flights uh, mainly. And then uh, maybe we also have to take into consideration if, for example, we have more projects, of course, it's possible that we fly more, but our emissions per person, how can we reduce it? So, we are starting to, to deal with this challenge right now. And the other one is the emissions at scope three, which I believe is the main challenge any foundation has, that is uh, to really design and build this methodology to measure, mitigate, and compensate emissions from our portfolio, from, from our grants. We need to uh, engage our grantees in this issue because they, they need to uh, help us to calculate the emissions they make. It's not so easy. Uh, uh, we need to have them engaged from the beginning. Uh, and uh, besides that, it's very costly, of course, because it's a, a, a huge change 
in our procedures. It demands some kind of technology so that it is more easy, it's easier to do. And we need uh, capacity building to really uh, make this happen. Uh, this is uh, the main challenge we have right now. And we hope till 2025, we, we at least uh, starting uh, getting a, a solution on that. Well, there are some opportunities as well. I believe the first of all is to be coherent to our work, any foundation work. Now, when we, we take this climate action seriously, we are being coherent with our work, being part of the solution. And actually, uh, climate action begins at home. Uh, we, we really value uh, initiatives as, as the one, this one, we act in uh, this philanthropy for climate uh, initiative. And thank you so much for, for uh, being part of this because uh, we, we believe this, all this process is a common challenge. Now measuring, reducing and compensating is a common challenge and, and not only for foundations, for, but for the humanity. And if we are together and have this space to exchange practices, methodologies, and, and learn from each other, I believe uh, we are in a better position to make it uh, be better and um, better for all as well.